Hello and welcome to week number four in English 112 Composition 2. Uh, this week and pretty much the rest of the weeks for the semester, we're going to be doing more of the same. And what I mean by that is coming back and um, practicing thesis statements, practicing MLA and APA format, in-text citations and um, bibliographies, um, also discussing issues on um, quoting, summarizing, and paraphrasing. And this is all going to build up to your final assignment, which I am pulling up right now that I'm going to talk briefly about. Um, so with this final assignment, and let's find this. I think I have to open it. Sorry, I didn't have this up right away. Okay, so with the final assignment, your final assignment is going to basically be a researched argument essay. And you will submit that research argument essay no later than 8 a.m. on June 29th. And you will submit it in um, the Dropbox in eLearning. Um, the final assignment will be worth 10% of your grade. And basically in the final assignment is that you will take um, an approach or you'll develop a thesis statement based off of your understanding and your reading of two scholarly sources. Um, so this is how you're going to, this is how the work that we're doing now is going to build up to that source. So in the past couple of discussion boards, you all have um, sort of perused uh, um, information um, on a, a particular or on a possible research topic. This week, I'm going to want you to use that sort of um, information and use that experience to help solidify an actual topic of research. And you want to be careful when you are developing your topic of research because you want to be able to develop a topic, but also develop an issue related to that topic. So a few of you I've put in your in responses to your discussion board post from week two, and I'm probably going to be giving you more feedback on, on, on the discussion board post for week three. But you want to be careful that your topic is not just an informative topic where you're just regurgitating information, but rather you act, you're actually taking a stance on a particular issue and the scholarly sources that you have found reflect that as well because you're going to be using those scholarly sources to support your um, argument, your thesis statement. So in the final assignment sheet, it discusses how every thesis statement has to have a claim and how every thesis statement has to, that claim has to be supported by reasons. I also give you um, some examples of what an arguable issue looks like. And then if you scroll all the way down, I've included some really helpful links on creating thesis statements, um, establishing arguments, organizing your argument, um, creating body paragraphs, um, creating rebuttal sections, and also writing conclusions. And if you are completely lost on what a research paper looks like, I have also included a link on that as well. Um, just like your discussion board post, I've included the rubric, the same rubric for your discussion board posts in regards to content, organization, style, and conventions. But the thing that you need to add with this final assignment is that you have to have a clear debatable thesis statement. You have to include in-text citations and you can choose to do your in-text citations in either MLA format or APA format. You have to have clear attributive tags and you have to reference at least two scholarly sources and demonstrate um, a sense of analysis and, th and synthesis on each article. And finally, you have to include a works cited page um, or a bibliography. Just to touch on this idea of analysis and synthesis. Um, when you think of analysis, and there'll be a link on e-learning that describes the differences between the two, but when you think of analysis, think of this idea of breaking things down. 
you have a passage or you have an article or you have a passage within an article. Analysis means that you are breaking down those components, you're talking about the author's thesis statement, you're talking about how the author supports that thesis statement, you're referring back to concrete examples that supports that author's approach to supporting their thesis statement. And when you synthesize, you're taking that information and you're developing and you're reorganizing that information to support your thesis statement. So analysis, you're breaking things down. Synthesis, you're reorganizing that information around a main point that you are asserting. You can't assert an opinion or a main point about something unless you know what the scholars and the experts, um, what they're saying and how they're asserting their opinions um, in the field. So the, the whole idea about you doing this final assignment is for you to find out what it is that they are saying, i.e. the experts, the teachers, the doctors, the lawyers, the experts in that field, the people that have very strong opinions, and you're developing your opinion, your thesis statement based off the information that they provide, and you're going to synthesize that information and test that the credibility of that information all centered on your thesis statement. That's why the thesis statement is so important. And that's why we're going to spend the next few weeks working on thesis statements. And this is why we're going to do more of the same with thesis statements. One of the things that you're going to also read about this week is this idea of genre analysis. Now, the link that I gave you on genre analysis, um, I'm not necessarily expecting you to be... Um, an authority on genre analysis. But I'm giving you this idea or this link on genre analysis so that you can understand that every discipline has what's called a discourse community. And think about a discourse community as a group of people who are talking about that particular subject and they are sort of transmitting their ideas within that community. Um, People who are into cinematic studies is a discourse community. If you're really into hunting and you read um, materials um, related on the latest issues, the latest, the latest ideas about hunting and materials and, 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 and supplies, you are part of that discourse community. So when we think of discourse communities and when we think of academic discourse communities, there are certain rules to abide by within different communities and you're going to read about that over um, this week. One of the things in particular in relationship to discourse communities and how that affects your discussion board post is this idea of academic formal writing. Now, I have put a lot of comments in relationship to this idea of using you as a pronoun reference. So for instance, if you study, you will get good grades. When we think about discourse communities or academic discourse communities, the use of you as a second person pronoun or the use of our, we, us as a first person plural pronoun is confusing. Um, and so we can, when, if I use you as a command, I know that I'm talking to you, my students. But as, in terms of academic writing, which is part of this discourse community, which has different, which has rules based off of its genre, then you don't use you because you're speaking to a larger universal audience. And when you read, when you read this, um, when you read the link on genre analysis and also I've included a link on and let me just pull this up so I've also included a link on how to read scholarly sources and so you're going to not only understand or learn about genre analysis and different rules within different genres but you'll also understand that there is a way to read works that come from particular genres. And this semester, we will be focusing on academic scholarly works that are part of academic scholarly discourse communities, because as students, that's what you are sort of getting a taste of. You're getting a taste of the academic research scholarly community. Um, another thing that I want to focus on this week 
is this idea of close reading. That was another thing that I had a lot of criticism about with your past discussion board posts. So you want to be sure that when you are including direct passages or when you're directly quoting from research material, from learning materials, from the text that I include on e-learning, I want you to closely read that and break it down. I want you to be cautious of this idea of responding to a piece of information and then going off. Um, going off and talking about yourself or talking too heavily about your opinion. I want your opinion to be structured around exact concrete pieces of information from the passage that you're pulling out. This way you're going to also become more aware and more cognizant of why you're choosing passages and it's going to also improve your active reading skills as well because you will be building up a schema, a background, you will be building up a purpose for why you're going into this research or why you I should say are pulling out direct passages um, from these um, seemingly difficult reading materials. Um, one of the things that um, I, I, I noticed that everyone was mentioning in their discussion board post from week number two was that this idea that they were surprised that Wikipedia could actually be used to work in your benefit. And I always tell my students that you don't want to ever cite from Wikipedia, but always cross-reference the information on the bottom of the Wikipedia page and also use this as a way to find other sources. The same is true for when you find your first scholarly source. One of the number one indicators that it's a scholarly peer-reviewed source is if the author includes a works cited page or a bibliography at the end of the article or at the end of the scholarly book. Get one of those articles or get one of those um, sources that are referenced and then you have your second source. Remember, when you are doing research, and this is going to become extremely important for when you move on to your upper level classes when you are doing research you are basically um, getting ready to participate in a larger conversation and these conversations are connected by the in-text citations and by the works cited and bibliography pages so you want to be able to make these connections and linkages with the sources that you're using so you want to create a paper trail and find and, and, and find out how these theories and ideas have developed based off of the previous citations of other theories so use the works cited pages and bibliography pages to work for you. Same thing is true about Wikipedia pages. Um, let's see if there's anything else that I wanted to cover. Just one second, I'm pulling up your um, course site right now. In the um, the one thing for this week, you will be reading Helena Veramontes's The Moths. And this is going to be a little bit more of a, um, you writing about or you sort of practicing um, this idea of coming up and developing a thesis statement. Um, so you will be um, developing a thesis statement about the moths and then you'll be using in-text citations to or direct quotes accompanied by in -text, with in-text citations to support your reading of, of the moths. Um, when you are going through the discussion board post this week as well, make sure that you read the directions carefully because I'm going to have you um, in, one, in one question, I'm going to want you to answer that question and use MLA format and then in another question I'm going to want you to use APA format so make sure that you have an understanding of the differences between how those two formats function and how and how a discourse community or what are the kind what are the kind of characteristics within a discourse community that might prefer APA format over MLA format. To give you a more concrete example of that is that when you um, analyze literature, for instance, that discourse community, when you're analyzing things like Helena Viramontes as the moths or um, Franz Kafka as the metamorphosis or um, 
or um, or um, Harrison Bergian um, by Kurt Vonnegut. In terms of literature, we use MLA format. That's part of our discursive our discourse community. But say you're going into psychology and you're doing a work on um, the mind and you're doing a work on how these people, how this sort of color might influence how somebody might react. And you're looking at ideas on um, chromotherapy, for instance. Um, in the discourse community of psychology, they're more, more likely to use APA format. So you want to know, you know how or when the, um, it's more appropriate to use APA format versus MLA format. And you want to keep this in mind as you move forward as um, a scholar and as, as a student in your upper level classes post this class. So for all of you who are sociology majors, who are going into criminal justice, who are going into nursing, who are going into more of the social sciences, even in the, 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 um, the science areas, more likely will use APA format, where those of you that are going into more of the humanistic studies, humanities, literature, art, film, you're more likely going to be using MLA format. And again, this week you'll be um, doing some outside research on the difference between those two formats. Um, so again, the thing that I'm looking for this week is that I want you to have some clear in-text citations. Again, keep up with this idea of the clear attribution that I wanted you to deal with in discussion board post number three. Um, keep Keep in mind this idea of close reading. I'm going to be a stickler about that this week. I want you to provide direct quotations in your responses and, and, and thoroughly break down those direct quotations. Um, I'm going to be a little bit light on synthesis this week um, because I want you to focus on analysis. But as we move on, and especially in your final paper, you're going to have to focus on, the, on this idea of synthesis as well. Um, again, if you have any questions or concerns, please let me know. Um, happy reading, happy writing, and I will see you in cyberspace.